Hi there, this is uh, Oscar November 7, Oscar Fox Fox. And uh, I uh, will uh, show you right now how you can use SDR console uh, without having any SDR receiver. Um, so SDR console, as you probably know, is one of the most popular SDR receiver software that is available. And uh, you can freely download it from the SDR console's uh, website. If you just type in Google, uh, and let me just open my browser, uh, you type uh, SDR console download, it will bring you right away to the SDR software uh, right here, and you can download it for free over here. I'm not going to explain how to install it. There are other tutorials available on internet, and uh, they will actually explain you how to install the software. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, um, thing to do. So I'm going to close my browser here and show you immediately my SDR receiver. Now, basically, uh, once you have the SDR receiver installed, uh, you can connect to any receiver or any SDR server that uh, people that actually share their receiver uh, for free on the internet. Now, in my particular setup here in my home QTH, I have a separate computer, uh, which is a Shoei box, very cheap, very low power uh, uh, computer. And this, uh, this computer actually is connected to my SDR Play. And the SDR Play is uh, actually being shared by the SDR server software from SDR console. So basically, SDR console itself comes with a built-in server. And those people who have a uh, SDR receiver, they have the option uh, to actually share their receiver and uh, bring it online. Uh, I'm doing the same because the advantage of having a uh, SDR server back in your home QTH or in the shack is that you can eventually connect to this server from any computer anywhere in the world. And you could uh, listen to your own receiver uh, from anywhere in the world without uh, being physically here in the shack. Now, um, let me just uh, quickly show you how you can access, uh, and it's a little bit of a hidden feature because you need to do a lot of clicks and you need to understand the software, uh, how you can connect and have a list of the different receivers that are available uh, on internet. And then you can use the SDR console software right away without having a SDR receiver and connect to these different receivers in these different countries. So first thing to do is of course open the SDR console software and then you click on select radio right here. And you will see that currently I only have one receiver installed and this is actually pointing to my own server. So when I double click it or when I click on connect, it will show me the different receivers that are connected to this server. In this case, it's an SDR Play RSP1A. And this one is particularly um, optimized for receive between 0 and 30 megahertz. That's what you can see right here. Um, here you can select the bandwidth that you would like to have. Now, because I'm uh, using this receiver um, from my server in my local area network in my LAN, I can go easily to one megahertz uh, without having any issues uh, of bandwidth because it's just in my local network. And uh, when I click on start, it will start the receiver right away. Now, let me just quickly go to uh, 20 meters where there is some activity and you can see already some action here happening in the SDR waterfall. And uh, you can click on any of them and you can start to listen. So uh, let me unmute it. This is how it looks like. I can use my mouse and use the uh, roll, what is it called, the, the wheel on my mouse to actually physically or to change frequency. So there you are. Let me just unmute it. So this is uh, how you can connect. Now, how do you get access to these servers that are online? That's the secret, right? Click on select radio. And now follow with me because it's a couple of steps that are a little bit, uh, uh, you know, difficult to memorize. Go to definitions and then you click on search. 
and right at the bottom you will see something like a v3 server if you click here it will bring another uh, screen here and uh, if you click on browse here online servers it will show you an entire list of different receivers that are available online there's a couple of things you need to know uh, the ones with the green flag means that they're online they are reachable but it's no guarantee that they will be working uh, I'm going to take one that I'm sure it's not working to show you how you can identify one that is probably not going to work uh, I have this one in Ontario for example now how can you add it first you need to you cannot click and and listen straight away you need to add this particular receiver into your list and doing so uh, you just have to double click this receiver and I can already see that this one is not going to work how can I see it well it's basically very simple there should be information that should be added automatically which should be the username password and over here you should have at least one receiver that is connected so if there is no username and password uh, when you double click it it means that the uh, uh, person who is actually sharing his radio he didn't add a username and password and uh, it's a requirement from the server software or from the uh, client software to be able to actually use the server so it means it's a misconfiguration on the other hand so they probably put it online but they forgot to add this uh, uh, username and password into the list and besides that there's even not a single radio or SDR receiver connected currently to this server at, as we speak now let me go back to online servers and I will take one that I'm pretty sure that is working uh, this one is a super station is really very well and let me just uh, uh, double click it okay let me take this one okay and right away you can see that uh, the uh, username is filled out okay and you can also see the password is filled out you can even show the characters um, and here you can see that this particular uh, server does have one two three and four four different receivers connected to the server so uh, eventually you could even select the server now the next step is to populate the uh, list of servers that you will put in your memory you can do that by just clicking on OK now be careful when you have add definitions uh, if you click on replace it will crush all the entries in your list right here so unless you you really want to delete all the different servers that's in uh, this list here you just have to click on update and you can see that it populated the uh, uh, server into my list over here and uh, I could eventually uh, click on it and start to listen to it first of course I need to save it let me just click on save and uh, this one here I could eventually connect to it let me add another one before I continue and listen to one of these servers I'm going to definitions click on search click on v3 server uh, populate the list here and there's one that is in Switzerland which I really like very much uh, I'm not sure which one of these uh, three ones it is but as far as I do remember I think it was Hotel Bravo 3, Hotel Juliet Kilo. Let me see if this one is correct. Nope, you see it's invalid password, so this one is not working. Let me take another one. The one in Switzerland, because I know there's one in Switzerland that really works very well. Uh, maybe, let's take the first one. Okay, you can see right away, the username is filled out, the password is there, and you have two different receivers and you can also see which frequency that these receivers are optimized for this is just informational it's not like you know a technical thing where it goes and gets this information you need to define it uh, in the server side let me just click on OK update it and I have added it into the list and save it okay so I've got three radios which is my local one I've got the one in uh, Switzerland and I've got the one in the United States how can I listen you click on double click it or you click on one of these uh, different entries click on connect okay and immediately you will be prompted with the different uh, uh, receivers that is connected to this particular uh, server uh, I'm going to take the uh, RSP1A because I know in general 
they use this particular uh, as your receiver for H, uh, HF receive uh, where I could eventually pay, take the SDR IQ. Let me take the SDR IQ because it, it's, it's really mentioning it's for HF purposes. Now, the next step you need to do is select the bandwidth. I do not recommend to go beyond 150 kilohertz, especially if the server is located somewhere on the internet because it takes a lot of bandwidth. Just to give you in perspective, uh, a one megahertz of bandwidth will probably require around four megabits of data so the uh, uh, bandwidth is 4 megabits which is almost like an HD TV bandwidth uh, so there you go let's click on start okay oh okay this one isn't working so let's take another one uh, click on start you'll have to search a little bit so let's take the RSP 1A I think this one is better uh, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll put it to 150 kilohertz click on start and there you go this one is working perfectly now in case you have this uh, waterfall completely blank like it looks like right now click on the auto button here it will automatically refine and retune the uh, uh, waterfall uh, uh, depending on the level of uh, RF gain that it has um, and you know then you can tune in so there you go let us listen let me just unmute here there you go Bravo, CQ contest, CQ contest, CQ contest, the Purdue Amateur Radio Club calling CQ contest, CQ contest, CQ contest. Okay, the neat thing about this is that you know I'm um, uh, I will I will give you more details and make more videos. Let me just uh, put some comments in the. Uh, 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 if you want to know more about SDR console, if you want more tutorials uh, regarding SDR console, but basically I have muted it and I can unmute it just by going into this field and I can actually go up and down the, 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 the frequency by rolling my uh, uh, mouse roller and my mouse uh, 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 wheel uh, and I can quickly go up and down frequency. You can configure all this kind of stuff but basically uh it is pretty handy if you just There's roll a mouse over, uh, beautiful signal Bravo. by the way oh, this so guy is coming in very strong also you have to play around with the rf gain um, and uh, adjust these different values different settings depending on the receiver you have uh, so just be aware of that um, so there you are um, I might just make another video on, on the layout that I have here. So there you are. Now, I apologize for that. The cool thing, the cool thing is, uh, in my case, uh, my SDR receiver is connected to my Kenwood TS480, and I could just—you cannot see my hand, but my hand is all here. I'm gonna just tune with the VFO on my uh, uh, Kenwood radio. And it will change the frequency on the screen here as well. So it just traces, it tra tr it tracks, no, it tracks actually uh, the movement of my radio, and it will follow the frequency that is displayed on my uh, TS480. So uh, you will need Omniric. I will make a separate video about it uh, on how to use Omniric. But basically, you could eventually uh, uh, configure. Uh, that so uh, you can use your and it feels pretty weird because I'm receiving so we're in the United States although I'm in Belgium and I can actually change the uh, frequency by using my own physical radio over here in my shack uh, and, and have a receive um, so uh, I think that's about it for this video uh, if, if you like uh, this video this kind of videos smash the like button and also just give me a little bit of a comments and I can make some other videos for you guys so uh, you can get more used to the SDR play. I can make a full tutorial on how to get used to SDR play because there's a lot to be said. It's a pretty complicated software. Uh, it's a genius software. So all my credits go to Simon uh, Golafor Echo Lima India, who is actually the uh, guy who writes this software. So let me just, uh, before I uh, stop uh, this video, uh, something I wanted to do. There is 
So there's some activity on this particular frequency, uh, 233, or what's the other one? Let me just go to the other one. Let me go over here. Uh, there you go. Let me just listen. Anyway, thank you for the call. Thanks for the uh, five and nine. Seventy-threes from Georgia. A very good night. Okay, what I can do now, and this is very neat, I can disconnect. I can select the radio. I can go to my own receiver, connect to it, and there you go, start. And now it will be my receiver. Let me see if I can hear that guy over here in Belgium. Oh, uh, Joker, go ahead. Yep, I can hear him. That's pretty good. I'll tell him uh, that. He'll get a kick out of that. Okay, so this is uh, how he sounds. This guy, the other one was a receiver in the United States. This is how I can receive here, this guy here in Belgium. I could disconnect and I could connect eventually to that receiver there in... Uh, no, not here. Select radio. I'm going to go to Switzerland now and see if I can hear that station also in Switzerland. I'll take that one, the second one, because it specifies 0 to 30 megahertz, so I guess it's optimized for 30 megahertz. I'm going to put this one 100 kilohertz of bandwidth, and let's see if I can hear him over there. I think this is going to be not good, because I can see already from the band scope, from the pan adapter, that this receiver has probably no antenna connected to it. Okay, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, let me know if you want more of these kind of videos. Bye-bye.